project. I'll introduce the fact that we'll be doing a series together moving forward. And then we'll end with just, yeah, what, what do you find compelling, right? So yeah. Get that on your lapel, if you please. Oro van or Oro ban? B or V? It's a V. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oro van. Okay, thank you. Let's see here. Yeah, I'll need to. If I lean back, can you? Am I clipped here? No, you're good. Okay. I was just. Uh, oh, thank you. That's right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I am sitting down with Dr. Evan Orovan, who is the new VPX for Thesis Gold, and, and he and I had a decent chance to have a conversation the other night, and it was just good to get to know you as a new face to the story here. Um, I guess you know. We will be, I guess, I'll, not to bring the lead here, I'll just get it out in the open that we're, we're going to start doing a sort of a, a geological 101 series, right? And we'll, you know, build it around the Tutagon and build it around Lawyer's Ranch. But that, that Evan or Dr. Evan, Evan, Dr. Orban, we'll see how much he likes me by the end of this conversation, how I, <laughs> have, to, how I have to get to address you. But uh, yeah, he will be, you know, every few months he's going to sit down and just teach some concepts to help, uh, you know, retail, retail individuals such as myself just to learn more about it and kind of gain that edge, right? But, for now, though, right, we won't get into those kind of gory details yet, uh, Evan. Maybe do you just want to just introduce yourself? Can, can, you know, what's your what's your chops, your CV? Give us the elevator pitch on on Dr. Oravan, if you don't mind. All right. Well, thanks for your your question, Matt. I appreciate it. So, I started my career doing ground gravity surveys at a VMS deposit, uh, and then I was doing regional mapping for the BC Geological Survey. So I I started off in government. Um, and then moved to industry. I worked for Extrata Copper Canada doing exploration for porphyry deposits under deep cover as well as IOCG deposits in Northern Ontario. Um, and then I was pretty frustrated in that activity because uh, I wasn't aware of all the tools that I could use for exploration and so I was seeking more knowledge uh, and ways to update um, how I can look at these different systems. Uh, and so I caught wind of uh, the Center of Excellence of Ore Deposits at University of Tasmania. I applied there, did a PhD with David Cook uh, and Anthony Harris, who's now the chief geoscientist of Newmont. I hmm. uh, did a PhD on the porphyry systems of Fiji. Uh, after I was done there, I was hired as the Australian Research Council's, uh, uh, I guess, I had an ARC fellowship in ore deposit. Um, I forget what the name of this thing was. Sorry. <laughs> oh no, and Australian, Australian Research Council um, fellowship in ore deposit footprints. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then so I taught at the university for five years um, and then um, after I did, re in there I was doing research on lith the lithocap environment and the green rock environment and so those are just different places within the porphyry environment. In the lithocap environment that's where you put high sulfidation epithermal deposits, they typically sit above a porphyry uh, and then the green rock environment surrounds a porphyry so it's a, your way to vector into mm. towards ore. Uh, towards the potassic center. And so that's where I spent about five years doing research. Uh, and then I wanted to get into AI and using machine learning and so other um, different techniques uh, to be able to look for ore deposits. So I took a job with the BC Geological Survey uh, where I was doing the mineral potential modeling for BC. And so there I did the method development um, for how we were going to do mineral potential modeling for porphyry, VMS, and magmatic nickel deposits. Um, and then after that, for the BC uh, Geological Survey, I became the senior economic geologist and uh, I started a project on critical minerals uh, in different ore systems within BC. And since my bread and butter was porphyry epithermal, that's where I started. Uh, and so I was looking at critical minerals in BC and uh, that's what attracted me first to the Tutagon region. Well then, yeah, perfect. Well done. You're already an expert uh, interviewer there. Your natural segue then is to discuss uh, yeah, what, what, so maybe tell us what the origin story then of yourself and, and thesis on the Tutagon, right? How, how did that come about? And then if, you, you know, if it fits into your own kind of conversational flow, uh, transition into discussing, yeah, what, 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 what draws you to Lawyer's Ranch? What, what, I mean, what do you find so compelling about, about thesis gold as is? Right, so um, when I was building out the project uh, for the critical minerals in BC, I wanted to look at porphyry deposits that span the different metallogenic epochs in BC. So that's the Triassic, 
the Jurassic, the Cretaceous, the Eocene, and even the Neogene. And so I needed to pick, uh, and, and that spanned the different terrains that we have. So I wanted to work in the Golden Triangle, into the Tubigon, uh, as well as Southeast <laughs> British Columbia. And, um, you know, I was looking for examples of the best mineral systems I could find within those regions that span those different ages. And so the Lawyer's Ranch one really stood, stood out to me as a potential uh, deposit to look at to see if we can figure out what the different critical mineral profiles are in these different systems. And so that's what really brought me there in the first place. Um, and what I soon was able to discover is, you know, ranch is a treasure trove of different critical minerals. It has bismuth and timony on top of its, uh, you know, its gold, copper and silver profile. So that's what first brought me into the area. And when I arrived there, uh, I was really impressed with the infrastructure. I was also very impressed with their commitment to the environment and to social strategies. Um, and the other thing that was apparent to me was that even though there was a four million ounce uh, gold equivalent deposit that's uh, measured and indicated, there was just so much blue sky potential in the area for further exploration. And not only for the low sulfidation epithermal like what we see at Lawyers, but also for the high sulfidation epithermal that we see at Ranch and the connecting porphyry systems. Yeah, and so you know, I, I I like to see you know, talking with you in the last couple of years, and more recently, he starts discussing the need to, you know, that they're at that that growth point as a company where they need to start bringing things in house, and 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 seeing critical hires such as yourself. I think that I mean, you clearly have a CV or a resume that, that looks like you can contribute something meaningful here in terms of, of understanding, or sometimes it's just a, a fresh perspective is what's needed, right? Uh, maybe can you can you maybe discuss more about but right now, what's kind of streaming out to you is things that you think kind of deserve, you know, short order, high priority follow up. Right. So, you know, we can't really walk away from that four million ounces in terms of the exploration view, because um, there is similar structures that we see at, at lawyers that were found throughout that property, and then at ranch, there's a bunch of high. So we have 30 targets hmm. um, uh, that span both of those projects, and so there's there's a whole bunch of different. Um, angles that we can throw at our exploration campaign this year. And so some of them is going to be high sulfidation epithermal, some of them could be low sulfidation epithermal, and then there's, you know, poke through the litho cap and see um, if we can discover porphyry as well. Mm -hmm. But sort of, uh, it's, uh, the focus will be around those epithermal style deposits with uh, maybe looking through a lens of porphyry uh, mm -hmm. exploration while we do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and that's something that uh repeating myself here a little bit, but yeah, it's not as if, with, with 4.7 million ounces to your name, there's no need to do anything in terms of upsetting the apple cart or, or throwing the baby out with the bathwater in terms of switching positions, but I, at the same time, I think it, you would be remiss to be in a company in your position, large company, successful company, with a potential for, uh, that a potential to demonstrate a potential for uh, a poor free underlying it, uh, I think you'd be remiss not to, right? Is that, is that a kind of a fair, fair way to phrase it? That's that's exactly how I look at it, Matt. It's uh, that that's how we're going to approach the summer and the exploration around it. Is you got to keep in mind um, that poor free exists there, and uh, if there's a good opportunity to punch a hole through and take a chance, mm -hmm. uh, we're certainly going to do it. But keeping tying that in close to the epithermal story as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll, I'll ask the final question, which may have been better off at the beginning a little bit, but you know, so I, I made the mistake and we had a PhD, so I kind of called you an academic, but no, it's a, you have a PhD in economic geology, so I imagine right. the transition's not as, not as tough as maybe a pure academic, uh, but maybe what's, can you just sort of on a degree of reflection right now, what, that transition from, from, from academia to, to, the, to a market-based company, can you just reflect on that in terms of things that you had to pick up along the way or you know just the realizations or kind of the little moments of clarity that, that have hit you since? Uh, yeah there's a few things. Uh, one of them um, that I like about switching at the moment is uh, so usually I would have a small project so when I was in academia we would just go in and be able to work on one cross section um, with a limited amount of money but now I really have the chance to sink my teeth into one particular location mm -hmm. um, and so that has me excited at the moment uh, to follow through on concepts and ideas that, that we're able to develop. Um, there's a, a large business aspect that I'm not used to coming from government and coming from academia that's really interesting um, and so you know I just try to listen carefully to what people are telling me and soak up as much as I can um, through mentorship uh, as I go um, you know stumbling along the way but it's been really great so far um, 
actually, and it's uh, I've gotten to meet so many different people at so many different levels within the industry, and it's been um, they've really been supportive and helpful in this mission that we have. So no, awesome. Well, I think we'll we'll keep it there. We'll yeah, as I said, we'll we'll have more in-depth conversations here throughout the rest of the year and, and ongoing there. I'm, I'm looking forward to those that where I'll pick your brain and you can help me sort of understand things a bit better. But yeah, we, we will we will have a little geological series coming out. But uh, I'll put a pin in it for now, and I don't think this is the time or the place to get into a super deep dive on that. But I can, that's something I look forward to as well. So yeah, thank you for that as well. Uh, thank you kindly. I look forward to doing that with you as well. Awesome. Thanks, Eddie. All right. Call it. Short and sweet. 15 minutes? Oh, 12 minutes. Oh, sweet. <laughs>